did get into uh, the, the internet fairly early, but I, one of my, um, very early on, I, my dissertation looked at uh, people's collective memory of Richard Nixon and, uh, and base, and I had a hard time getting that uh, published. I finally did get it published actually as a book, but the one, the thing that got published was uh, results I had on credibility. Uh, and so early on, I started do, looking at uh, cre uh, credibility of, um, of, you know, specialized media. I started out with, uh, you know, talk radio and talk television. Um, but by uh, the 96 election that, uh, so, uh, it was, so it wasn't terribly long till I, I started looking at, uh, at uh, it, the internet and was, I was fortunate I got into it uh, before a lot of people in the field. It seemed to be really big about uh, 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 1999. And uh, so, and, um, so I did a, did a lot of work on credibility, Houston's gratifications. Um, uh, those are the two big, big ones. And then um, I went on uh, in the 2004, let's see, no, uh, yeah, 2004, yes, 2004 election that uh, all of a sudden my uh, research, I've, uh, one of the things I've had uh, a research colleague since 1996 that we've been, uh, Barbara Kay and we've worked together. In 2004, she said, um, why don't we do uh, research on blogs that I've got, uh, that one of the really leading early bloggers, uh, it was called Instapundent, was a professor at University of Tennessee where she taught. And so I said, sure. And then I Googled uh, blogs to find out what they are. And we were, uh, that's my research has probably gotten the most attention uh, because nobody uh, had done uh, looked at blogs. And so since then, I, I've, uh, for a lot, I mean, for quite a bit of time, my attention still looked at, uh, at uh, media at credibility. Well, I moved kind of from med media credibility to media trust as the field kind of moved that way. And, um, you know, I looked at apps, social uh, social media, um, but I was I was getting to a point where, you know, it was getting tougher because you know, early on I was kind of a trailblazer in a lot of things. Then all of a sudden, you know, I'm catching up to the field. So uh, one of the areas I I moved to. It, um, it was looking at uh, misinformation and um, had a, uh, where I was lucky that, uh, yeah, oh, here's one of my, er yeah, this is, uh, it, this was one of my earliest articles online in the know. Um, I, it was published in 2010. I think we started trying to publish it in about 2008 and, uh, it took six drafts before they, they accepted it. Uh, and Barb had done an earlier work on use and gratifications, but it was one, so it was probably the second one on use and gratifications. And one of the things that you find when you do internet early internet research, there are no measures. And so you go, uh, you basically use old measures. And so we use television measures and not surprisingly, uh, the internet uh, uh, motivations were very similar to TV motivations because that's what we asked. And uh, 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 yeah, this is uh, this is one of uh, again one of the ones I was really happy with. That, that this is uh, one of the leading journals in the field, and uh, so yeah, this was. Uh, one of the first, it, this was what I was able to get in 
an article looking at credibility of social network sites. Since then, um, I've had more difficulty because uh, it's been done. Uh, so uh, now I, when I use trust, uh, I tend to use it now as uh, a very another variable to explain things rather than as this is what I'm studying. Uh, so yeah, so we have this foundation in the research where we had researchers early on looking at personal influence. We had yeah. researchers in the 1960s looking at source yeah. and message credibility and varying those yeah. in experiments. And we bring this all forward to the question of misinformation, disinformation, and your chapter. How does yeah. that play into this? Well, I mean, uh, again, I mean, that uh, just uh, just like that, that, I mean, credibility research went back a long way. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, back to some of the early research in, in the 40s uh, looked at source credibility. And misinformation is uh, similar. I mean, you know, there's been uh, certainly, obviously, misinformation itself goes uh, politically. We looked and uh, going back to the first uh, um, president, presidential election uh, with uh, Adams and uh, uh, Jefferson, the, you know, that they were using uh, misinformation. And so it goes all the way back and Again, it's been studied in the field for a long time, but you know, again, with uh, particularly because of uh, COVID nineteen, really brought that brought it. Uh, well, I should say, two thousand sixteen election, and then um, COVID nineteen really brought it uh, back, and um, you know, so it's it's now a major area. Of research. So again, one of the problems is trying to figure out what you can do um, that adds to it. And honestly, I haven't been as successful as, I, as I'd like on, uh, on getting things published on disinformation and misinformation. So I don't think I'd be recognized as a scholar in that area because there are just so many uh, article there's just so much research out there it's it's a tough area to publish it well, so i was really you... pleased uh, so i was really pleased to get this book chapter so i mean this is one of the first things uh that i've been able to use some of my work to include included yeah and that was part of our thought i think on this handbook was that there were important studies not getting published for a variety of, yeah. of reasons but as you say I mean, I can remember, and and uh, you you knew Dennis Davis at Southern Illinois, yeah. and when I was a grad student, you know, we were talking in his seminars about black, white, and gray propaganda and yeah. the studies that came out of the '30s. And it seems yeah. to me that you fast forward to 2016 and 17, and and then 19, you know, you had a president, Donald Trump, who was fond of calling everything he didn't like fake news. Yeah. And that this starts to muddy the water and creates a lot of uncertainty for people. Yeah, I I agree, and I will say, fake news is a little different than uh, misinformation. I mean, one is that it, it can incorporate misinformation, disinformation. One real difference with fake news is that all. Uh, that all the other ones, I mean, well, particularly disinformation is done for political gain, while uh, fake news can be for political gain, but it's all it was all it's also done as a way to make money. That uh, you know, there's a whole uh, there's a community in Macedonia that uh, a group of teenagers were creating uh, mis. Uh, Disinformation about the two thousand about celebrities in general, 
they did uh, this is before, in the 1990 uh, 2016 election. They you know they learned that uh, Trump was one that you you know people would click on it, and so uh, I mean they created uh, disinformation about uh, the election just because you know he, it was uh, it was click yeah oh you, you got it yeah. Uh, so uh, from my understanding, there wasn't, uh, I don't think they ever proved any uh, Russian ties, although uh, you may have heard I, in the uh, just last week that they announced um, that Russia had spent $300 million since uh, 2014 trying to influence elections. And so and they're they they were and they're very good at it so as you were working on this chapter with your graduate students yeah what kinds of issues came up as you uh began to summarize the work in this area well um what in some cases you know drawing uh distinctions uh between um the measures i mean particularly uh, when you have misinformation, disinformation, it's kind of, it's often tough to, to know whether someone is lying or, I mean, misinformation is where you accidentally, uh, you know, give, uh, give information. So you, you're, you're just wrong. And uh, for instance, I mean, you know, media actually, you know, early on um, in COVID-19, they, the uh, media was actually correctly reporting wrong information from the CDC. Like, you know, the CDC said, oh, you know, masks uh, won't work and, uh, you know, it's going to be not as serious as the flu. Um, and uh, so, I mean, misinformation is unintentional. Disinformation is intentional. And so, so a difficulty is sometimes knowing the idea of intentionality. I mean, uh, I this this weekend I, I was was a Tribune fest, and I got to hear um, uh, Peter uh, Peter this him like Peter Wolf the uh, he's the author of a new book, The Divider. And one of the questions was about you know Trump told about th uh, thirty thousand more. 30.5 thousand lies during his um, term of office, but even his cabinet didn't really know whether he was just out and out, uh, you know, lying that he knew what the truth was and he was uh, just mistaking the truth, or that really he believed uh, his own uh, misinformation. And I think even that may even be a problem with January 6th, even though he was clearly told time and time again that, uh, you know, the election wasn't stolen. You know, he clearly listened to people who said it was stolen. And so, you know, it's hard to know what, I, really hard to know what the president thinks. And regardless of, of what the motivations were, I'm interested in kind of what you learned over the weekend in terms of it. It seems as though the institution of journalism took took a credibility hit during all of this. It, it raised enough challenges to credibility yeah. that some people that some of that stuck. Yeah. I mean, one of the things is that, uh, you know, early uh, that uh, early on that uh, Trump had an interview with Leslie Stahl. And, you know, he, one of the things about Trump is he often was very clear what he was doing. Uh, and one of the things he, he, he was asked why he calls things fake news. And he, and he said that, uh, well, you know, the more that I, I, you know, I call it fake news and call you the enemy of the people, the more, uh, people you know are going to say are you going to believe the media 
or you're going to believe Donald Trump. And uh, clearly what the expectation and the reality was, uh, you know, a lot of uh, his supporters in particular um, didn't, you know, believe Trump over the media. Um, and w one of my frustrations, I think uh, another thing that's hurt is uh, to me, and I was frustrated. One of the things I, I saw uh, a session on PBS. And so, you know, I was able to ask one of the questions and I asked, uh, you know, the panel that included Ju Judy Woodruff. So I was able to, and I was able to get a picture of Judy Woodruff and I was so, I got a picture of Amna Nawaz who is my news crush. And so I was thrilled. But anyway, uh, I asked her, why is it that, uh, you know, PBS focuses so much on the horse race of the election and not nearly as much on, you know, the democratic threats uh, to the election. And she and all the three panelists pushed back against me and said, no, you know, we, we covered that a lot. Uh, and, you know, I will say they just, on Frontline just released a two hour documentary on it. Uh, so it isn't a topic that they ignore, but I even said, well, like, you know, if you did, you know, like one story about, uh, for every three uh, stories on the horse race, if you it did one information on the, da on the dangers of, uh, to democracy and, Again, she's just said, you know, we do we do it a lot, and so I, I think that that is, uh, I think one of the problems is that you know, the media did a great job, I think, in the 2020 election, as uh, you saw, um, you know, early the early primaries open, that they really started covering the threats to democracy well. But I've been really worried uh, that they've kind of, with Biden, since he's a very traditional uh, Democrat, uh, follows the no the norms that they, you know, they cover them like uh, they they used to cover presidents, and so I'm worried about whether. Uh, they're going to spend much time on um, pointing out uh, threats to democracy, and then, you know, if uh, certain if enough of Trump's people get elected, you know, that are election deniers and who have said point blank, you know, if I don't, we don't, I don't get the uh, results of the election that I want to see. I'm willing to, you know, to throw out uh, the electors and and again, I just don't think the media are paying enough attention to that. I think that's something that's hurting their credibility. Also, I mean, there, there's several things, and again, there, there have I will say there have been some really great stories about it, but um, they're often, you know, to to make a difference, you need to cover something you know, continually, and it just is covered sporadically. I wish uh, that they would give it much more attention. I mean, the same like they do with climate change and, other, and some other issues that finally they've been showing attention to.